Hey guys, this is Michael with Blue Roots Media and Marketing, and what we're going to go over today is how to make a document print ready for your printer. And so what we're going to be covering here is how to take your Victor artwork that you made in Illustrator and making it a Rasper artwork. And then we're going to talk about die cuts and then the final process of sending it out as a PDF. And so basically... Let me go over the difference between rasp raster images and victor images. I'm going to warn you now that I like to call it raspering or rast raster, raster, like a rooster or something like that. And it's probably not the right term, but that is how I like to call it. So anyway, rasper artwork is any digital art compound co any digital art composed of horizontal or vertical rows of pixels as a result as a result when rasper images are enlarged the image quality diminishes significantly typical rasper files are like PSD, TIFF file, JPEG, GIF, and B bitemap or BMP. So anything that you're designing in Photoshop is going to be a raster image and is designed for the web. Um, it can be printed. I'm not saying that it can't, but you, if you're going to do it, make sure that it's a DPI of 300 or above so that the resolution or the pixels that are horizontal or vertical are more in there. All right, so what a Victor artwork is, it's a digital composed or mathematical lines or curves. As a result, Victor images can be reduced or enlarged in size indifferently in without, without any loss in, in its quality. Typically... Those files are IE, ESP, PS, INDD, PDF, or CDR. CDR. All right, so basically when you are going to go ahead and do um, printing for like a printer or something, in this case, making this label is what I did, make sure that you start out, check with your printer, but make sure that you're in CMYK mode. Um, in Illustrator, you know, you can change that by going to File, New Document, and then you can choose either between RGB, which is basically going to be web work, or CMYK, which is industry standard. Um, you can choose your DPI. I always choose high and you should too. All right, I'm not going to go through the whole process of all that, but um, of setting up a new document. If you want to learn that, YouTube it. But what I am going to say is that so we have this file right here um, and it is full of Victor points and I did that specifically because when I use different printers, I go ahead and some of them like out in China they want all these different points and then there's some like over in North Carolina or Pennsylvania that doesn't need all these points but they do need the font because this text here they need them Victor because they might not have the font and stuff so we're also going to learn how to do creating outlines um, basically what you do is you go to group object and you're going to hit rasper now, I'm not going to do this one because it has over 5,000 points to it. And I'm going to switch over where I've already rasped for this image. So, we have path. This is a rasper image. According to Dolphin, the printer that I use out of North Carolina, they do not want this shape to be rasper. They don't need it. Um, basically, they're creating a plate of the background and then they create... Um, our film of the background and then they create plates or whatever. I'm not sure of the printing process. I'm not a printer. So then I hit Rasper. I make sure it's in CMYK. I make sure that my um, high um, at my resolution, my DPI, our, our PPI is in 300. You can use document settings or you can go ahead and you can specify. Um, you can change these as much as you need to. Um, and then transparent. I like transparent for all my whites. That's just me. And then I hit OK. Now this is an image. Alright. Now for this right here, my American flag, which is all Victor points that I went and did. Um, you go ahead, options, rasterize that. Click OK. And so basically this is easy. This is, this is like so easy. Click clear here. Um, you're going to click on these. You click Alt-Shift and you can highlight all these points. And then shift and 
then shift here, then click here, and then shift, and highlight everything. Make sure that this is all highlighted, and then object grasper. Um, click OK. And so basically, I even do this for my image. Um, just because when you do this, it's guaranteed that it's going to be in the file and it's not linked. Because, like, say this, um, logo. I keep that in a source file and I just go when I create the document and I drop it in. I don't have it in every single folder or whatever. That would be ridiculous. Say, like, even this 50-50. Uh, do not add water, this antifreeze coolant, and even these three little um, background mines. I do not keep that stuff. I don't create that stuff every time. I have that in a special folder and stuff like that. Alright, so we go and we move forward. Make sure when you're creating stuff to get rid of layers. Like these layers right here are not there. They were just extra text stuff that I probably hit. Um, highlight it and then delete it you don't need it I have the guides in there because one of the reasons why I went ahead and rasp I went ahead and did an image trace and Victor these points was because you can't erase um, document uh, erase in Photoshop I mean in Illustrator like you can do in Photoshop but you can create Victor points and erase those points so to make the document look prettier, I just went ahead and I did these guidelines, and I did that. The image didn't originally look like that. And so then what you go ahead and you do is, I don't need this open, but these are groups. I would label these groups. These are creating outline points. These are vector points that they can go ahead and create plates off of and stuff like that. But, say... And you don't, you're not going to send the artwork file. So say like maximum protection. I left that one to show you. Hit control, create outlines, and then bam, it is done. Those outlines are created. They're able to print it and stuff like that. Um, you can also do that by going to type and then create outlines or using the shortcut. And then basically, after you've done that, make sure the spelling spellings correctly. Any effects that you might have had on these files, on the I mean, on these individual items and stuff like that, make sure that they're correct. Okay. And so next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the um, bleed cut or the die cut line. And basically, what this is is used in many many industries, even in like sewing and stuff like that. For, but for the case of printing, it is so that we're able to create a shape. Industry standard is is an eighth or 0 0.18, 0 0.15 um, from the um, document size. So this black line, just so you know, is the document size. That is where the size of the document is. Like if I hit Shift O, which will bring up the artboard, um, my document is four and a half by four. Um, Four and a half wide by four and a seven uh, or four point seven uh, high, and so then you what you do is you go ahead and you create a bleed line so that they're able to go ahead and create the shape that you want. So this should always be done in a separate doc in a separate layer. You always create a separate layer just in case you don't know. Right down here next to the trash can, new layer. I label this layer die cut slash bleed line because it's also known as a bleed. In in some, I'm gonna delete this so I can show you how to do it. Oop. Um, and it because in some industries, because what you're doing is you're basically anything outside of that red line or to that red line is going to be printed on a sheet of paper and it's going to bleed out of it. And so you know when you print something on your printer and there's the white border and it's a picture and you want it to be the full eight and a half by eleven page but it's not working that is why it's because there is a bleed that needs to be set and you need a special printer sometimes to be able to print that particular bleed alright so what I do is I hit this document settings I hit up to 0 0.125 it's up to the printer double check the printer to make sure that you're right because they can get a little touchy about this situation and then I want rounded corners and so when I'm going to go to my shapes 
and I'm going to hit the rounded rectangle type tool. The round rectangle tool. If you want square, you hit square. Um, whoop, whoop. And then I start at the edge right here. I will work my way all the way across, and then all the way down. Making sure that I'm right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unfill. I'm going to click on this and I need to create a bleed. I mean a, a spot color. So I like that red. It can be any red. It can be this CMYK red. But you're going to want to create it as spot color so that they know not to print it. And they know that it's a bleed. So what you do is you go here and you create a new swatch. You go ahead and you leave that the way it is, CMYK. You change the color type to spot and you name it die cut slash bleed one color. Click OK. It is set. And then what I go ahead and I do is I lock this layer so that it doesn't change. In fact, when I design a um a document, I have templates set to where the bleed is already there so I know what I'm working with. Then you click document setup and you get rid of it because there's no point in having this. And then your document, make sure you double check everything. If you're uh, really organized, like I tend to be, not particularly with this document because I was quick, label, just go ahead and name everything. And then what you go ahead and you do is you take and you click file save I'm gonna click save as a PDF and you click save I'm gonna replace because I've already done have this document there and I normally I hit high quality printing preserve illustrator um, editing capabilities I'm not gonna do that um, check your settings but marks and bleeds I have not seen a printer yet that I work with that wants all this stuff there's probably some people that want it. Like these trim lines would be where these black lines would be. That's where they would add up at. Um, but, and I don't want to use document bleed settings because even that red line that's on the document setup does not show up in the PDF. And so what I do is I typically just go ahead and I set this at, one, at a half an inch, at an inch sometimes, and I click save. It will go ahead and you, it will print. I do not want to do that. And people will see that, hey, this is the document. This is your bleed line. They're going to know what the trim is because they're going to know the size. And then you will be, you are now done. The next thing is trying to get it to them, which I use Dropbox for all that. Um, I hope this has been informational for you. I hope you've learned something. Um, I apologize for not releasing more videos in the past. I have been extremely busy um, fighting cancer and um, in my face and I haven't been able to talk because of surgery. And anyway, so I apologize. I hope to be uploading more videos. Check out the website at blue-rootsmarketing.com. Oh, just released the photography website, which I'm going to Sacramento next week for a photo shoot um, for a wedding shoot, which is completely awesome because I have, I'm just getting back behind the camera and I'm loving it. My photography website anyway is www.blueroots.com photos.com blueroutsphotos.com and facebook facebook.com slash blueroutsmm subscribe to the channel share this video like it and like always if there's something you want me to go ahead and talk about or to create a video for let me know um, comment below and I hope you create something have a good day